Good morning. <laughs> and welcome this morning as we observe the Feast of the Epiphany. Um, and I just want to um, share a few announcements um, for this morning. It, it is just the core group of um, of those who are offering worship this morning and um, so we so if, if um, so I just ask that everyone um, stay in, in place and and that um, anyone who is here I will bring communion to you this morning for everyone else joining us on Zoom this morning, I will be offering communion after the service. And um, we will also have uh, rain or shine, um, the degreening of the church. So I will be bringing the poinsettias out. And for anyone who would like to take one of the beautiful poinsettias home, we will have those available. And also, rain or shine, we will be um, putting away the, the crash from the lawn. So anyone who would like to help with that, um, feel free to come by following the service for communion or a poinsettia or to help with the crash. Um, and um, journey forward update, we will continue to keep everyone updated um, each week as to whether we whether, no, we will, it is not whether, when we are um, just continuing to move forward with our in-person, but we are continuing to monitor the numbers um, closely uh, for the COVID risk factors, and we will just keep everyone updated on that. Um, tomorrow evening, there will be um, a gathering on Zoom for the exploration of race and white privilege. And um, also, uh, Math Adventures and Wordplay has resumed on Saturdays. There's information in the e-news for that. And also be sure to see the presiding bishop's um, speech that we included. It's in the e-news and on Facebook and on, on YouTube just talking about these times. So thank you all very much for being here. And, um, and now um, we will stand for our opening hymn, which uh, we will sing in our hearts, and we will hear Kim's beautiful voice for our opening hymn. <laughs> Thank you. 
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the most, uh, the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh God, by the leading of a star, you manifested your only Son to the peoples of the earth. Lead us, we, lead us who know you now by faith to your presence, where we may see your glory face to face through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will rise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant, your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah, all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give the kingdom your justice, O God, and your righteousness to the king's son, that he may rule your people righteously, and the poor with justice, that the mountains may bring prosperity to the people, and the little hills bring righteousness. He shall defend the needy among the people. He shall rescue the poor and crush the oppressor. He shall live as long as the sun and moon endure, from one generation to another. He shall come down like rain upon the mown field, like showers that water the earth. In his time shall the righteous flourish. There shall be abundance of peace till the moon shall be no more. The kings of Tarshish and of the isle shall pay tribute. The kings of Arabia and Saba offer gifts. All kings shall bow down before him. All nations do him service. For he shall deliver the poor who cries out in distress. And the oppressed who has no helper. He shall have pity on the lowly and poor. He shall preserve the lives of the needy. He shall redeem their lives from oppression and violence. And dear shall their blood be in his sight.
Please stand for the reading of the Gospel. The Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ according to Luke. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, where is the child who has been born King of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. Then King Herod, when King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise you, Lord May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. We heard those beautiful words from Isaiah. Arise, shine, for your light has come. And don't we all need a bit of light right now? And I know I am quite grateful that the days are all getting, already getting a bit longer, one day at a time. And I continue to greatly appreciate those mornings that I can get out and walk and can actually see and feel the sunrise and the light. Today, as we observe the Feast of the Epiphany and enter this season of Epiphany, we know that the word Epiphany simply means showing or shining forth, revealing. Divine light shows forth from the Christ child. In him, is a revealing of God. This divine light that shines forth from and through the child is not a light foreign to this earth. It is the light at the heart of all life. It is the light through which all things have come into being. The light at the heart of everything The light at the heart of you, the light at the heart of me, at the heart of all creation. And there is a story of the burning bush in the Hebrew scriptures in which Moses sees a bush on fire, but it is not consumed. And he turns aside to look at this great sight. And some believe that the important thing about this story is not that the bush is burning, but that Moses notices. Because every bush is burning, every bush is on fire with the divine presence. Everything in all creation shines because God is at the heart of it all. And so our epiphany story invites us to open our eyes to the glimpses of this light that surrounds us. 
this light, this light that the Magi find is a threat to the most powerful man in Judea because this light at the heart of all life is not just for some, not just for certain people. Any powers or power structures that favor only some rather than serving all is a false power and feels threatened by the shining of true power. The power of love, the power of the light, life, and love of God. The light which shines in the darkness and the darkness does not overcome it. January 6th, the actual date of the Feast of the Epiphany. And for many, Three Kings Day, a day of festive gathering with family and friends, gifts, food, and fantastic music. And many years ago, when we were visiting my in-laws at the time in Puerto Rico, our children actually had their picture taken with the three kings at the mall. It is a wonderful and joyous time. And we all have family and friends who have birthdays on January 6th. So I have actually been angry when this date has seemed to be taken over as a day marked by violence and a threat to democracy. When presiding Bishop Michael Curry preached from Washington DC this past Thursday, he called on Christians to reclaim the spiritual light that this feast day celebrates and to reject the deeper darkness shown in last year's attack on the Capitol Epiphany at its deepest roots is about the light and life and love of God he preached. And what happened here a year ago in this country that we love was not about light and love and life. And we are better than that. And we must declare it. We are part of this light and love and life of God, and we are called to shine for the healing of this world. And it is in nurturing our relationships with our God and with each other that we are sustained and strengthened to do this healing work. And we do not do this work alone, <clears throat> but we must start with ourselves, preparing our hearts and saying yes to the light, life, and love of God, even if we are not sure where that yes may lead us next, but trusting in that light, life, and love of God. The church <clears throat> has a custom of blessing homes on the Feast of the Epiphany and the weeks following. Family and friends can gather to ask God's blessing on their homes and those who live in or visit them. And home is wherever the heart is. This is an invitation for Jesus to be a daily guest in our home, our comings and goings, our conversations, our work, our rest, our joys, our sorrows. And one traditional way of doing this is to use chalk, blessed during the liturgy of the Feast of the Epiphany, to write a code of holy graffiti above the home's entryway. And Europeans have chalked their doors as part of Epiphany house blessings for centuries. And for this year, this holy graffiti would look like this. 20 plus C plus M plus B plus 22. 
And the letters C, M, B have two meanings. They are the initials of the traditional names of the three magi, Caspar, Melchior, and Balthazar. And they also abbreviate the Latin words Christus mansionem benedicat, may Christ bless the house. And the plus signs represent the cross and 2022, the year. And we ask for this blessing throughout the year. And marking the doorway to one's home is rooted in the Hebrew scriptures, which remind us that God has at times commanded God's people to mark their doors. The Israelites marked their doors with the lamb's blood on the night of the Passover. And a similar command was given in the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart and write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. And so this morning we will bless this chalk with a prayer from the book of occasional services. And I invite anyone here today or who's coming after the service or in the coming weeks to take an envelope, which will have a piece of this blessed chalk and the prayer and to mark your home. Again, home being wherever your heart is. And so now, we will ask for God's blessing. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. The Lord shall watch over your going out and your coming in from this time forth forevermore. The Lord be with you and also with you. And let us pray. Loving God, bless this chalk which you have created, that it may be helpful to your people, and grant that through the invocation of your holy name, all who use it in faith to write upon the doors of their homes and names of your saints, Caspar, Melchior, and Balthazar, may receive health of body and protection of soul for all who dwell in or visit their home through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And as you take this chalk and mark the lintel of your front door or your front porch step, you can offer the prayers, which is, in, which is included in here. The Magi, Caspar, Melchior, and Balthazar followed the star of God's son who became human 2,022 years ago. May Christ bless our home and remain with, uh, with us throughout the year. Visit, O oh blessed Lord, this home with the gladness of your presence. Bless all who live or visit here with the gift of your love and grant that we may manifest your love to each other and to all whose lives we touch. May we grow in grace and in the knowledge and love of you guide, comfort, and strengthen us in peace, O oh Jesus Christ, now and forever. Amen. And arise, shine, for our light has come. Amen. And let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, 
begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son worshiped and glorified, yes. as spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we celebrate the baptism of Christ, let us offer prayers to God who washes us in the blood of the Lamb. On this day, when peoples from afar came to worship Jesus the Lord, let our prayer be as wide as a world. For all the holy people of God, especially Michael, Carly, Joan, and Jim, let us pray to the Father. Let the light of Christ shine on all people. That the light of Christ may shine on all nations far and near, and that the church may welcome them with the diversity of their cultures, let us pray. Let the light of Christ shine on all people. That in our day, justice may flourish and peace come to all the world especially in all the areas of conflict. Let us pray. Let the light of Christ shine on all people. That those who stand up in his name against bigotry and racial injustice receive the full measure of our support. Let us pray. Let the light of Christ shine on all people. That God's people may hear the poor when they cry, have pity on the weak, and open their hearts and hands to the needy, let us pray. Let the light of Christ shine on all people. That all who look for a star to guide them may discover the goodness of the Lord in people full of faith and love, particularly within the community of St. Mark's and those on our prayer list and prayer chain, let us pray. Let the light of Christ shine on all people that we give special thanks for those who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this week, especially Grace, Sophia, Norma, Alex, Temba, Grace, Shadera, Allison, Desiree, and Nina. Let us pray. Let the light of Christ shine on all people that we remember the well-lived lives of all those departed from us, especially Olga. We pray also for the victims of the fire in Philadelphia on Wednesday and the hundreds of individuals who lost their lives in our country this past week because of the senseless use of guns. Samir Jefferson, age 14, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Cedric Flippin, Trenton, New Jersey. Marche Hazelwood, Capitol Heights, Maryland. Latrice Burke, Cleveland, Ohio. Tina Griffin, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Aaron Vincent, Brooklyn, New York. Elijah Munson, age 11, Riverdale, Georgia. London, age 6. And Demetrius, age 9, Wall Neal, Columbus, Ohio, Cornell Daniels, Newark, New Jersey, Linda Halligan, Simsbury, Connecticut, Marco Toller, age 13, Euclid, Ohio, Joshua Robinson, Dallas, Texas, Lexter McNeil, Rayford, North Carolina, and Dominic Hill, Towson, Maryland. Let us pray. 
Let the light of Christ shine on all people. That in our Christian communities we may learn, like the wise men, to share the treasures of our goods and hearts. Let us pray. Let the light of Christ shine on all people. Let us pray for those who suffer the consequences of the current pandemic. That God the Father may grant health to the sick, strength to those who care for them, comfort to families, and salvation to all the victims who have died. Amen. Lord, Lord, our, our, God, oh. Go ahead. Lord our God, we rejoice that you have become near to us in Jesus, your Son. Let him be the light of life now and forever. Amen. And let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Peace, 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 peace. O Lord our God, you are worthy to receive glory and honor and power because you have created all things and by your will they were created and have their being. Please be seated. All things come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. 
It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, whoever, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love, you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace, and at the last day bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And as our Savior Christ has taught us, we now pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Kim, are you okay? of Christ, the bread of heaven.
Before we offer our final prayer, I would just like to thank Rob very, very much, who has been with us um, as our guest organist for this Christmas season. And as the Christmas season draws to a close with the observance of the Feast of the Epiphany, um, we say thank you, Rob, so very, very much for being here um, all of these Sundays. And, and if everyone were here rather than on Zoom, we'd all be. <laughs> And so, um, so thank you so very, very much. It's really been a joy to have you with us. And we look forward to having you with us again um, in the future. So thank you, and, and we send you with many blessings. Um, and, and now, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Christ, the Son of God, be manifest in you that your lives may be a light to the world and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia! Alleluia!
that we will have administration of communion uh, following this service outside. Um, beautiful poinsettias here who need new homes and, um, and uh, the prayers and, and blessed chalk for the blessing of your homes. We all can use a, a blessing of our homes and, um, and for any help that you want to offer in helping to put the crush away. Thank you all so very, very much. And God bless you and keep you.